price of copper has jumped about 25% since the start of this year. But are the market fundamentals supporting this big move? Joining us now to discuss Hussein Aladina, Managing Director and Head of Commodities at TD Asset Management. Hussein, great to have you back on the show. Thanks for being here. All right, so I looked at the chart this morning. I did the math. So this is a substantial move so far in 2024 for Dr. Copper. I mean, what's going on here? Yeah, so the, the red metal has been supported, I think, by kind of three main factors, right? Last year we had... Uh, a big mine in in Panama that was uh, you know taken out of commission or, or not not brought into commission, which I think forced everyone to kind of update their supply demand balances and and kind of a a recognition or a realization that balances maybe are not as as loose as kind of prices were uh, discounting. I think this year we've seen um, Chinese economic activity on the ground improving uh, from low levels, but no longer getting worse and on the margin um, getting better, which is quite supportive for copper demand. And I think the third piece is this sort of realization, recognition that sort of the AI trade and, and the amount of power that's going to be needed to support those data centers is material. Um, we can debate what the power source is for the generation, but you're going to need copper to move that power. Um, you, you know, you asked, is, is the price reflecting fundamentals today? We think that copper prices have actually moved too far too quick. Um, you know, if we talk about copper on a multi-year view, copper prices do have to move higher. But north of 10,000 right here, given the fundamentals that we're seeing, I think is a little bit too much given today's fundamentals. When I look at a multi-year view though, quite constructive, not to bore the viewers, we talked about this before, we haven't been investing in the supply side. We haven't been investing for the better part of the last 10 years. And you know, you and I can go and try to find a copper mine. We're not getting ore to the market on greenfield production for 10 years. So copper prices will have to move higher than the 10,000 that we're trading at right now. But I think that probably we see a bit of a pullback, five, seven percent. Um, over the course of the next couple of weeks. I was, um, over the course of the next couple of weeks, I was going to ask you if the fundamentals longer term might support price, but right in the here and now, if we've gotten a little far ahead of ourselves, we see a pullback? Yeah, so commodities, commodities, broadly speaking, are coincident indicators. They should reflect the supply and demand today. Equities can discount the future, right? This is why actually we have a low correlation between commodities and equities. Um, could we have a scenario where the constructiveness on a multi-year view keeps copper prices higher than I think right now. Of course, we saw this happen in the energy market in 2005, 2006, where anticipations of future deficits lent to higher prices today. That actually softens the fundamental balance today, right? If the copper price is higher than in theory it should be, I'll see less demand today and potentially more supply on the margin. Um, do I think, am I positioned for a bit of a pullback? Yes. Ultimately, do I think copper is one of the better performing commodities on a multi-year view? Absolutely. Let's talk about uh, some of those factors you're breaking down there, particularly what was happening in Panama. As, yeah. as the industry tries to work through that, you said we're not, it's very hard to go find a new copper mine. As we get further into the future and all those factors you talked about, AI, we'll get into EVs in a second as well, are we going to have the copper? Um, based on the supply that we have today, right, the, the, the supply that we can identify that is going to be produced over the course of the next five, ten years, if I look at that relative to demand projections, no, we're not going to have enough copper. And that means that the copper price has to move materially higher to do two things, to bring about increased production. Now I have to deal with the lags associated with bringing copper to market. Prices will have to average higher to discourage demand on the margin. Will it discourage EV demand? Will it discourage AI demand? That can be debated. Um, probably more of a substitution out of copper into aluminum um, maybe in power generation or in the transmission of that generation, maybe in air conditioning units in China, etc. Based on the supply and demand today, there is not enough copper to meet you know, the, the demand projections that we're seeing. Now, as prices move higher, we will find more mines. Those mines will not come online in 25, 26, 27. They take 8 to 10 years to bring on to, uh, onto the market. And during that time frame, you're going to have to discourage demand. The only way to do that is via price. The EV story, I want to dig a bit deeper Please. into that because obviously we've seen this move in copper, a pretty substantial one this year, against the backdrop of EVs were a part of that story, but the EV demand has been going in the other direction. Now they're talking about hybrids and stuff. I mean, how does that play into what we've been seeing? So just, I just want to be very clear, EV demand growth has been moving in the other direction. The absolute number of EVs, i.e. the absolute number of pounds of copper I need for every EV that is sold is still materially higher than what you see in a nice vehicle. So definitely the second derivative has slowed and, and likely remains pretty tempered for, for 24 and maybe even into 25. But I am using incrementally more copper. Now, we can argue that I'm using less than I thought I was going to use 6, 12 months ago. That's true. 
Um, and that, again, is a, is a bearish factor for copper, but today everyone's focused on, you know, the number of research reports I get from the cell side on power generation, AI, um, I, I get like multiple reports a day. So everyone is focused on that sliver of the market. Today it's a relatively small component of demand. It will get materially larger. Um, it's not there yet. And this is why I think the market has kind of maybe moved a little bit too fast. Uh, too high, too fast. So obviously a higher price for copper in the future would incentivize people to start mining for copper. It sounds like it's going to be a bumpy road though. It's not easy, right? Even in the last cycle when we were trying to find copper reserve, right? So copper, unlike oil, we, we don't have shale copper. We don't have a OPEC that is, you know, keeping copper production offline in anticipation of better price. You are producing everything that you can today. And you know the, the, the reason the first quantum Panama situation was, was such a surprise to the market is that was supposed to be concentrate, that was supposed to be you know, copper that came to the market to help with the supply demand balance. Um, if I rewind 12 months when folks still thought Cobra Panama was coming online, most folks had 24 supply demand relatively equal. Now you've lost this production, you've had some production issues in other regions as well, that has taken a sort of balanced market with tight inventories to a deficit market. A deficit market, tight inventories, is a recipe for higher price. It's hard to know what's going to happen in the Panama situation, and I try to keep on top of the story in terms of, you know, yeah. will there be a changing of, of sentiment? Can they actually get things going again and get on, you know, the right side of the, of the officials there? Could that be a wild card in the in the months ahead? It doesn't look like there's going to be a quick resolution because there hasn't been, but could it be a wild card? I, I, look, I, I ultimately think that production will come to the market. The economics for the producer are probably not going to be as good as they thought they were going to be when they first started investing. And this is another thing that. You know, we've kind of forgotten over the course of the last 10, 15 years because commodity prices have been depressed. But in environments where commodity prices are higher, you see more resource nationalism. You see more strikes. The, the, you know, the, the labor that's working at these mines, everyone's got an iPhone today. They know where the copper price is. When copper is north of 4, 450, they're going to be far more inclined to ask for more. Right? So that is going to be an issue that, again, we have not had to really think about for the, over the course of the last 5, 10, 12 years. As commodity prices move higher, anticipate that the countries where that production is situated will want to keep more of it.